So, dealing with difficult people is not always easy. But what if I'm the one that's difficult? Well, today we'll talk about that. Your first question may be, how do I know if I'm a difficult person? I think I'm easy to get along with. I'm, you know, very energized and um, a go-getter. Um, you know, nothing's wrong with me. So here are a few questions or phrases, statements that if you continually hear them, there's something that's off. Some of them are very obvious. You're difficult to deal with. I don't like being around you because you're so hard or harsh or, you know, you're so negative. Do you ever see anything that's positive in a situation? You should be optimistic sometimes. You're so competitive, you always have to win. You always have to be right. You know everything, don't you? You're hard to please. You're such a perfectionist. Ah, oh, Nothing can ever be too right for you. If these are some of the statements that you've heard or you keep hearing, also, if you've had a lot of friends and then, you know, bit by bit, you've seen them disappear. It could mean that, yes, I may be a little aggressive or too overpowering for those around me and it's causing them more harm than good. So now that I know I'm a difficult person to deal with, I've got to accept because it's great to have knowledge, but knowledge that's not translated into action is useless. For example, if I go to, if I've had five or six jobs and every single time I change jobs, there's somebody or a few people that I can't get along with. There's always something going on, even in the group of friends that I have or at church or wherever, there's always something going on. Then I need to start looking at myself in the mirror instead of pointing fingers at others. So I realized I've accepted. Now, what do I do? These are some things that I've practiced and I found them to be very helpful. One, Stephen Covey um, in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, habit number five says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And this is very important because when I'm listening to you, my aim is not to hear to respond, but my aim is to understand you as a person and understand your feelings and where you're coming from. So I'm listening for the undertones, the more hidden messages the message where you're saying you're in pain or you need help or I don't want advice, I don't want an opinion, I simply want someone to listen. Another thing that I usually do because this is one of my biggest problems, I get, I hear a question or I hear a comment and I just blurt and then after I blurt it, I'm like, oh wow, oh no. And my friend and I were just talking about this on the weekend. She's saying she has the same problem. and. What I've learned to do is to process my thoughts. I was um, trying to look up something that I learned a couple of years ago, and I see a new and improved version, and it spells think. Is it true? Is it, uh, is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? So when I filter my thoughts or my words through this, these five um, filters, then I would be more... Um, prepared to actually engage with somebody in a in a more constructive manner so for example what i'm going to say it may be necessary it may be true it's probably going to help but am i saying it in a kind way because my aim is not to be right my aim is to be helpful and if i'm saying something that's supposed to be helpful but i'm packaging it in a wrong way guess what's going to happen the person's going to completely miss the message and then my purpose was not served. This brings me to a third um, thing. When I'm speaking, I think about the relationship. So am I focusing on being right or am I focusing on maintaining a relationship? And there are times when you have to speak the truth and the truth will hurt, but you can also speak the truth in love. And if I'm thinking about my relationship with this person, I want to make sure that after the interactions that we have, it doesn't matter how often or how frequent or infrequent, after each interaction, that person is better off than when I met them. Or at least if I was not able to make his or her life better, it's not worse. The last suggestion that I would say to you is to pray. And by praying, 
I acknowledge that I need to change. I have a problem. But the power for me to do that does not lie within myself, of myself. I have to get external help. I'm seeking God's assistance and I'm seeking God's help because his word has promised me in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 and 27. This is what the Bible says. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take away the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will make my spirit, sorry, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgments and do them. If I could change myself, I would, but I don't need to worry about changing myself because the word of God has promised me that God is able, he's willing, and he's ready to help me. So I need to seek him, seek his help and his assistance to become a different person, to become the person that he's created me to be and to be a blessing wherever I go. So there is hope with God. Everything, all things are possible. Can I pray with you before we go? Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you that our weakness can become strong in you. Our faults can be taken away and we can become the persons that you created us to be. We can be vessels of praise, honor, and glory to your name. And we can be builders and encouragers and helpful to those around us. I pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to do just this and that you will continue to encourage us and continue to walk with us. Bless each of your children that are listening, God, and help us to trust in you and to keep holding on. We give you praise, honor, and glory with thanksgiving. Amen. I'll see you next week, but until then, stay safe, stay close to God, love everybody around you just as you love yourself. Ta-ta, see you, bye-bye.